So welcome back to the channel and in today's video I am telling you guys why I personally think that there is no such thing as a greatest fashion designer of all time. But before I continue with this video, you can follow me on Instagram for your fashion news at Fashion Roadman. And to support this channel, in the description below, there's a link to my Patreon where you can support this channel financially and be part of the reason why I can put more time into my YouTube videos. So it's no secret that the fashion industry is very competitive. And of course, when people have fashion arguments, people are drawn to certain fashion designers that specifically resonate with them. And I've seen that when people argue about fashion, it leads to this perceived need for people to try and get one over other people or to feel like they need to prove why their favorite designer is better than someone else's favorite designer, for example. But I think the question I need to ask everyone watching this video is, how exactly can designers, especially fashion designers, be objectively compared? How is that possible? So to explain my point further, I'm going to talk briefly about uh, the careers of three, in my opinion, legendary fashion designers. So I'm gonna talk about Vivian Westwood, I'm going to talk about Ray Kubo, and then I'm going to talk about Oswald Boateng. So a brief overview on Ray Kubo. Of course, Ray Kubo is the founder of the brand Comme des Garçons, um, the avant-garde queen, obviously known for bringing the avant-garde, the modern avant-garde aesthetic to the limelight. And of course, she's gone to inspire many different designers. A lot of people describe Ray Kyle Kubo as a fashion designer's designer or a designer's favorite designer. And of course, her impact in fashion is in many different forms, from building one of the biggest empires and inspiring most of the fashion designers that we have today, to also being responsible for the tutoring of a lot of great designers we see and that's why you can read a lot of articles where they refer to a certain group of people as the Comme des Garçons disciples. And those are people like Tao Kurihara, all the people that worked under her. So Tao Kurihara, Jinya Watanabe, um, new people um, like Kane and Amiya, Chitose Abe, Junichi Abe, all those people who have gone to do great things and all of them have learnt under Rei Kaokubo and to some extent under Jinya Watanabe because of course, Jinno Watanabe is kind of like Rei Kaokubo's right hand man. And actually, Jinno Watanabe, from what I've read, actually teaches people uh, that work for Comme des Garçons how to make patterns. But like I said, um, Rei Kaokubo spearheaded this new anti fashion movement, and a lot of great designers, of course, that we see now were inspired by her. So if we think of the Antwerp Six and how they have a very avant garde aesthetic, people like Margiela and you know, people that design against the status quo. A good case can be made that a lot of those designers from Belgium were inspired by what they were seeing being done by Rei Kaokubo and other designers like Yoji Yamamoto at the time. And if we go into Vivian Westwood, Vivian Westwood referred to as the mother of punk rock. She brought the style of punk rock to the forefront and kind of made it mainstream in Britain and worldwide. Punk and punk rock is probably currently one of the most referenced subcultures in the whole of fashion. And if you look at brands like um, Number Nine or even now The Soloist or Undercover, there are a lot of Japanese brands and a lot of streetwear brands or high-end brands in general that reference a subculture that was kind of started by Vivian Westwood and everything around her from Malcolm McLaren and all the different things that were happening around that time, like bands like the Sex Pistols and the movement that those people were able to create. Punk rock is actually characterized as avant-garde before avant-garde. When people think of avant-garde, they think of Ray Kaokubo and they think of Yoji Yamamoto and they think of dark clothes. But avant-garde is really just anything that is very, very far away from the status quo at, at a specific time. Um, so what Vivian Westwood was doing at that time was very avant-garde. And because Vivian Westwood's time was before the time of Yoji Yamamoto and Rei Kaokubo, one can actually say that maybe part of the inspiration of Rei Kaokubo and Yoji Yamamoto was actually from Vivian Westwood, that seeing that you can be so against the status quo and still have some success. And then talking about Oswald Boateng, Oswald Boateng is quite different from Vivian Westwood and Rei Kaokubo in the fact that he is a tailor. So he is more of a master of tailoring. And Oswald Boateng was the youngest person to ever have a store on Savile Row. And Savile Row is Taylor's royalty. If you're unaware of the heritage and the history of Savile Row, it's 
this this area in London that is just full of world-class, world-renowned tailors. So if you have a shop on Savile Row, that means that you are a certain level when it comes to tailoring. And he's the youngest person to have ever had a shop at Savile Row, and that tells you a lot. And then he also was the first black man to have a shop at Savile Row. So there's a lot of history there. He was one of the first tailors traditional tailors who bridged the gap between high-end fashion and tailoring before high-end fashion was really separate so the side of you know people like Rei Kaukuba, Yoji Yamamoto that's high-end fashion that's artistic fashion and then there's like tailoring which is like Armani, Oswald Boateng those were well, Oswald Boateng and Armani specifically bridged the gap and they were kind of making the first tailors who started to make ready to wear runway clothing because before only high-end designers did that it was not until people like Armani and Oswald Boateng that traditional tailors actually started making clothing on the runway and kind of bridging the gap and kind of blurring the lines between high-end fashion and tailoring. Oswald Boateng is also credited with starting a new aesthetic in tailoring completely so before Oswald Boateng uh, if you were on Savile Row there was this very traditional way that tailors used to make suits and it was very specific and you couldn't break the rules there was rules to how you made a suit the lapels had to be large the silhouette had to be boxy the trousers weren't very very slim but they were definitely really well tailored and that was the silhouette of the Savile Row standard suit and a lot of people in Savile Row hated Oswald Boateng because Oswald Boateng transformed kind of what a Savile Row suit looked like and that's why with Oswald Boateng suits, they're very easy to see because you see it through the really thin lapels, the skinny silhouette of the suits, or the really skinny or slim fitting trousers. And to add injury to insult um, to the Savile Row tailors, Savile Row tailors use very traditional colours and fabric. So they used to use colours like grey, navy, black. Those are really charcoal. Those are really traditional colours. And Oswald Boateng used to use insanely bright quirky colors he used to make things like pink suits orange suits green suits purple suits any color um so Oswald Boateng changed the face of traditional tailoring and now which is so funny because on Savile Row all the tailors were like Oswald Boateng doesn't know how to tailor he's not a tailor a good tailor he's transforming what a suit means and now a lot of tailors on Savile Row have now adopted some of the aesthetic that Oswald Burton created. So now I've talked about three different designers, legendary designers in my opinion, and they're all legendary for different reasons. One's a tailor, one's a cultural influencer, that's Vivian Westwood, and then one is just an artistic mogul in Ray Cal Kubo. So their careers are so different and their impact on the fashion industry is so, they're so far apart from each other one is more music based and subcultural based one is more moving fashion forward in terms of the avant-garde and making really unique things so against the status quo at her time which was Ray Kakubo and then one changed the face of what tailoring is in Oswald Boateng and of course Oswald Boateng is not the only person that did that it was kind of Oswald and Armani um, that interchangeably over time made that change so I don't see why people feel this need to have one person that's the greatest designer of all time. I don't think if you're being objective that is physically possible. I don't think that's logically possible because like I've just shown, I've just mentioned three designers and there's so many legendary designers in history that I could have talked about. Just to show you that they're known and they're great for such different things, you just can't say who's greater. Some people in their head believe that maybe Ray is a better designer than Oswald Boateng, but one's a tailor, one's a fashion designer. You can't really say who had a higher impact in fashion. You can't really say that because Oswald Boateng's impact in tailoring and tailors and that side of fashion is undeniable. The same way Ray Kubo's impact or Vivian Westwood's impact is undeniable. You can't really quantify a number to say this is the the number of impacts that Vivian had this is a number that Ray had and that's one really big issue I've had with fashion and just discussions around fashion um, I think a better way to tackle it 
is just appreciating greats for what they've done. Just taking a seat back and just really enjoying just the history of fashion and just, wow, Ray's great for this reason. How amazing. Vivian West was great for that reason. How amazing. Instead of trying to compare and contrast to such different careers that you will never really come to a sensible comparison. And it's so funny because one, one thing that I've seen in fashion is where people will be like, that person's not a good designer because they don't know how to construct a blazer properly. And basically I've had this conversation with people in the past that people like Martel Magella, people like Ray Kalkuba, people like Yoji, these people are so highly trained that every single thing they do is deliberate. Let me give you an example. Ray Kalkubo has said in many times that her goal for fashion is artistic. So what that means is sometimes she will use a low quality material if that low quality material is able to make her achieve the artistic form that she's trying to achieve. So if a high quality cotton, yes, it's a high grade material, but if the way it, it flaps or the way it sits or the way it drapes on the body isn't really what Rei Kaokubo is trying to achieve. She will actually go for a cheap polyester if that allows her to get the artistic shape she wants. So with Rei, it's nothing to do with quality because she has said she will go for a lower quality, a lower grade material if that helps with the artistic form of a garment. So what that means is when you buy Comme des Garçons mainline, you're not really buying it because of construct, good construction. You are buying it because of the artistic work that goes behind it. The same can be said for designers like Margiela. Like he was deconstructing things and deliberately not stitching things right as an aesthetic and an artistic expression. And so many designers do that. So on the highest level of fashion, it becomes a bit blurry when it's more about art than it is construction. Um, the people who care about construction are people like Oswald Boateng. So Oswald Boateng has dedicated his life to making the perfect suit in an aesthetic that he has created for himself. So that is where construction is important. So once again, the, the, the different designers, their sides of fashion and the way they view fashion, the way they design, they're so different that to compare designers and then come up with one sole name as so-and-so is the greatest designer of all time, I think is very disingenuous. And I think it's just one thing that I want to be critical about in the fashion industry, because a lot of people do it. Like a lot of people, their favorite designer is Rick Owens. So in every argument, they feel the need to prove why Rick Owens is the greatest designer. Rick Owens is not the greatest designer of all time. Rick Owens is a legendary designer, as well as many different designers that are legendary for many different reasons. I was actually reading this really interesting fashion theory book. And one of the points they brought up in this book was how people judge fashion collections, right? And it really changed my opinion on the way I see fashion, honestly. So what it said in this book was that at the highest level of fashion, there's no such thing as a bad fashion collection. And the reason for this is because at the highest level, people are using the, the best artisans and the best fashion design techniques. So really it comes down to artistic expression. And some people, what they perceive to be a better or a worse collection really comes down to how they interpret a collection and if they interpret to be something good or to be something bad. And ultimately, because we all have different lived experiences, we can interpret, five people can be in a room and interpret the exact same thing five different ways. And that is why different people have different opinions about the same collection. And so because someone's opinion on whether a collection is good or bad is based on so many different subjective parameters, no one can actually come to an objective conclusion as to if a fashion collection at the highest level of fashion is actually objectively good or bad. And that blew my mind. I was like, Pfft. like I had a crazy moment. I was like, yeah, that's so true. And now because of that book, and I really agree with what was in that book, I feel like when I talk about fashion collections in the future. I won't really be talking too much about if it's objectively good or bad, more just me breaking down the inspirations and then I'm going to leave the audience to decide whether they think they like it personally or not. But yeah, 
Comment down below what your thoughts are on this topic. Do you think there is such thing as a greatest designer of all time or is there not? Um, like this video, subscribe to the channel if you are new. Turn on your post notifications so you get notified when I post a new video and stay tuned for more videos.